Доброго ранку. Це розмова про європейський зелений Afternoon we're talking about the European Green Course for the local communities in Ukraine. Talking about perspectives and possibilities. The Kyiv dialogue and the Konrad Adenauer Stiftung are the organizers of this event jointly with the EU company. Let's open the green potential together. My name is Natalia Gumenyuk. I will be the moderator of this event. To begin, I'd like to say you'll be able to hear. You can. Once again, if you want to hear the translation, please select the language. Speaking in English, that uh, you can find the translation uh, if you're listening to uh, us at Zoom. Ми ж продовжимо розмову українською, і я на початку хочу передати слово Ребеці Хар. I'd like to give the floor to uh, Rebecca Harms, the ex MP of the European Parliament and the head of the Green European Free Alliance. Rebecca right now is in Wendland in Lower Saxony. She will explain the importance of today's event. Good morning. Uh, good morning, uh, Natalka. Uh, good morning, dear panelists, uh, dear guests uh, of today's event about this uh, idea, this big idea and big project of the European Green Deal mm -hmm. and the possible opportunities and challenges for Ukraine. Uh, let me first of all thank uh, the heads and the staff of the offices uh, of Kiev Dialogue the Konrad Adenauer Foundation, and especially also uh, the delegation of the European Union to Ukraine in Kiev. It was really a pleasure for me to prepare for our event today with all of you. And I hope that we will be able in next year, hopefully already in spring, to continue our exchange and uh, public conversation on this topic of the Green Deal. I know very well that Ukrainians are right now again uh, challenged and threatened uh, by uh, Putin, who has been amassing a huge army close to Ukraine and is demonstrating his readiness to attack again uh, the neighboring country. I am myself watching the developments day by day and sometimes also during the night. I am uh, not really relaxed uh, after I heard um, the outcome, if there is any, of this conversation between President Biden and Putin yesterday. So I feel not yet relaxed, but um, I also think that we should not allow Putin to interrupt our European way. In this case, uh, today, our common efforts for the European Green Deal. For the European Union, uh, this whole project can be considered as the biggest effort ever to fulfill the commitments of the Paris Agreement and it uh, is really a very serious way now taken to slow down global warming uh, and to reduce the impact of greenhouse gas emissions uh, in the world. If we want uh, to be successful uh, in the world, uh, we need more countries to join outside uh, of the European Union if we want, first of all, to be successful on our continent, we can't do without countries like Ukraine. While knowing that Ukrainians, for different reasons, have a bit different priorities than CO2 reduction, I want today to underline that the Green Deal is focused on decarbonization and CO2 reduction but in practice, it really offers huge opportunities for economic development uh, in Ukraine. If we together, so uh, from the EU side, but also on the Ukrainian side, 
if we together manage to get well prepared, we can really improve Ukrainian energy security and the security of supply, which in the actual uh, context of another aggressive move of Putin is really important. So energy security in times uh, where energy is used as a weapon is really important. We can together uh, organize the real modernization of the power sector. We can develop renewable energy in a, in a reasonable way, and we can also get better in energy saving and efficiency. We can together improve mobility in Ukraine, especially public transport. We can prepare sustainable land use and initiate what we call, meanwhile, the circular economy. The better Ukrainians prepare, the more chances for innovation and new jobs especially also for young and ambitious people with uh, good skills, the better uh, the job situation will become. Uh, finally, the common efforts for a sustainable industry and economy will also help the integration of the European Union in different sectors, namely the energy sector. So this integration uh, sectoral integration also matters in these uh, security aspects. One of the conditions for success is that the EU is aware of Ukrainian priorities and needs in the Green Deal. On the other hand, also Ukraine has seriously to develop strategies for the necessary huge transformations and innovations. So um, at this point, I would like to thank everybody for joining, especially our panelists from Slavutic and Lviv. And I give back the floor to Natalia Gumenyuk, whom nobody must introduce because we all know her as a former chief editor and anchor woman at Romatske. So um, I uh, give now the moderation and the question to Natalka. Thank you, Rebecca. It's time to represent our participants. The European Green Deal is a strategic program which aims at achieving the sustainable development in economy and society to make Europe in the climatically neutral continent by 2030 and Ukraine has announced officially that we are joining but what does it mean in practice what kind of benefits we're gonna reap we're gonna speak further on we've got Andriy Zinchenko who is the co-founder head of the energy he's also the mayor of Slavutic also we've got the president of the energy efficient cities of Ukraine also we've got Chloe Alia the head of the operational department of economic cooperation energy infrastructure and environment she from the represent representative office of eu in ukraine who is the driver for this process but before beginning our conversation we need to explain what it is and what would be the perspectives what kind of benefits the ukrainian society can reap Natalia Andrukhevich, the head uh, of the board of directors of the Resource Analytical Center, Society and Environment from Lviv. Greetings, Natalia. Greetings, dear colleagues. It's a great opportunity. It's a very important topic. For the two, for the past two years, we have heard in the mass media, we've heard from the politician, from the Green Deal, we've heard about the European Green Deal, or how it had been called the European Green Agreement, but oftentimes we do not understand what that is and what kind of benefits we're going to reap as citizens, what kind of benefits the communities might reap. On the international level, we understand the benefits, but on the local level, we do not. I'd like to speak more about the... I'd like to mention what a Green Deal is. Not many of our participants might know what it is. 
what is this Green New Deal and how is it related to Ukraine. The European Green Deal is an ambitious program of the EU that has been adopted in December 2019. It has an ambitious goal it, to achieve a climate neutral Europe until 2050. In the beginning, people thought that this European Green Deal is about ecology, about environment, something green, about the birds, about the grass. No, that is not the scope of this project. There are lots of comprehensive questions. We're trying to integrate climate and environment in all spheres of economy and our everyday life. So these projects applies to energy, energy efficiency, transportation, industrial policy, agriculture, biodiversity. In all these areas we will have some changes happening and throughout the first two years of this uh, European Green Deal it is accompanied by adoption of various documents. We've got strat strategies, plans of actions, funding programs, changes to legislations. It's difficult to say that it's happening from scratch. This European Green Deal, the EU has been adopting environmental climate policies. We're just reinforcing these ambitions. We have these are the changes in the areas that require these changes. It's also related to the EU. So the question is where does Ukraine fit in here? What would be the benefits for Ukraine? So if the EU is changing what would what would be the benefits for us? So when the EU has announced this European Green Deal our leadership said yes we want to join we want to be part of this European Green Deal. It's great, it's wonderful, it's important that on the highest political level we're raising these questions. We want to be part of this deal. We want to put efforts into it to achieve climate neutrality. On this highest political level there are many processes happening. The question of the European Green Deal was the question for two summits that happened since the course had been announced in 2019 during the Council of Association. We also have spoken about this European Green Deal and about the priorities for us that have been identified in Ukraine. What is the priority for cooperation between EU and Ukraine in the framework of this Green Deal? It is energy efficiency, green carbon, green hydrogen and industrial alliances. And let's get back to the question of the benefits for our citizens. Yeah, we have political announcements, some steps and implementations of separate Green Deal elements into some strategic documents of Ukraine. Right now we're observing some new economic strategy that has been adopted or adaptation strategy. These elements are being integrated. But what would be the benefits of ordinary average citizens? A great view, uh, way to do it is to observe the ci cities. When we have surveys, what is quality of life for you, for a, an average citizen? Many organizations that conduct surveys touch upon the questions which are encompassed by this uh, Green Deal. We, we all want to see uh, use uh, energy-friendly transportation, public transportation. We want to have energy efficient buildings, we want to pay less for gas, heating, water supplies, we want to breathe fresh air, we want to have green spaces in cities and towns. It's very important uh, that this uh, European Green Deal, the plans of this deal are built on all levels, starting from the lowest level to the highest level. For example, we've got lots of documents, we have KPIs related to cities up to the highest level, strategic level. 
to the highest level of EU, what EU says about its leadership in terms of climate change, biodiversity, and so on. Getting back to the cities. Let's make, if you have free time, you can make this uh, exercise. Write in Google a modern city in your, sit in your language you will see lots of urbanistic futuristic landscapes we'll have these buildings skyscrapers with no trees with no green zones green spaces but that is not a, a european city of the future according to this uh, european green deal because the kpis included in this uh, deal there are lots of KPIs, for example, uh, KPIs for 2030. We can imagine what would be this perfect ideal European city in 2030. In reality, it's going to be climate neutral. We've got a KPI that 100 European cities uh, up until 2030 will have become climate neutral. It will have, we will have to reduce emissions, greenhouse gases, gases emissions. They will need to be reduced by 55%. Also, the future cities will have a developed green economy. If we speak about the communities, we'll have green agriculture. We have various ambitious goals related to agriculture we have uh, KPIs related to to the or organic uh, production the use of pesticides other chemicals in addition the city of the future will be comfortable in terms of smart mobility will have green public transportation the cities will switch to railway transportation and also greenhouse gases emissions will be reduced the cities will also be energy efficient it will be using renewable sources of energy and regarding the citizens it's going to be comfortable for the citizens to live in such a town because this area of um, zero emissions is very relevant for the cities we have lots of Ukrainian cities who are suffering from these pollutions of air, water, noise pollution, which is a very important aspect. This, this uh, association agreement directive related to the sound noise uh, pollution and also biodiversity will have uh, green spaces, parks, squares. It's a different approach which will give us different benefits in terms of adaptation to the climate change. On the screen we got this uh, picture with a tram and this track is uh, covered by greenery. That's a reality for European cities. It's beautiful. It's also environmentally friendly. It allows you to adapt to the climate change. That is our vision for the city of the future. If we speak, if we come back to this European Green Deal, I've said before, it covers from all the levels, from the local level to the global level, EU level. And EU as a, a vital player in terms of change in biodiversity, around environmental friendliness. But on the local level, there are a number of elements that the cities might be used for their development and green transformation. What can it be? First of all, it's a uh, European Climate uh, Pact. Second of all, uh, it's a platform on crea creating green spaces. It's uh, implemented by the Agreement on Green Cities. It's uh, similar to the Agreement of Mayors, but in the spheres that the Agreement of Mayors is not covered, the agreement of uh, mayors is related to uh, cutting down on emissions, but the agreement on these green cities, it's about the cutting down on emissions, clean air, clean water, 
environmentally friendly transportation for cities. It's all about biodiversity in cities. So this is kind of a complementation to the mayor's agreement. And the next uh, part of this is the new European Bauhaus. This will be the new architecture uh, style which will combine efficient and beautiful architecture. We also would like to see that in our cities. These all tools are not available for Ukraine at the as of the moment, but the platforms which are created in the framework of this uh, instrument, they are all available. So our cities are already able to use this experience to use these platforms to communicate informally, but we do hope and we actually do uh, try to advocate this through all the possible channels uh, that so our cities in so we try to make our cities participants of these important tools uh, at least on the informal level and uh, maybe it could be done on some level like on a mm, road map um, as a road map for Balkan cities, so maybe it may be possible for Ukrainian cities to be part of these tools. Because when we are talking about uh, green hydrogen or green alliances, we have to remember that these cities could become these drivers of the green transformation and we see a lot of examples in Ukraine and I am talking here about uh, European cities without excluding Ukrainian cities and I hope that today we will be able to talk about Slavutish and to listen to some interesting stories from them also about Vinitsa uh, regarding the strategic planning. They have beautiful plans and they have huge ambitions regarding the Green Deal. And for example, Rivne City, we also see the green corridors and biodiversity development. Uh, these are also very, very good changes. So official joining these tools will be a very great plus for and benefit for our city. So the next slide, please. Uh, also, what what should we do? What should Ukrainian cities do? What they can do as of now, having this situation, seeing where the EU moving forward. So we have to avoid wasting time and to think about possible changes. They can, for example, formulate their own green agenda or they can take some positive examples from the European cities. There are a lot of information on the platforms I mentioned. There are many useful things mentioned there. We can also be closer to citizens. We can improve the quality of their life in terms of environmental quality. So that could be done already today and there could be two different directions what cities could do. The first one is more strategic, strategic one. All the cities, they have strategic documents they from time to time they prepare strategies of on the development or other programs and it is very important to include uh, these uh, mindset in issues into these strategies because it defines the vector of their movement of the future and this is important and also it is important that city would write them on their own there should be no external consultants for there who just came and wrote this strategy and it was just uh, uh, used for recording or for ad advertisement that we are pro a progressive we are now progressive and we are now very modern. So the second direction are the actions. As of today we can start from small things. For example, saving and preserving green zones or um, announcing the center of the city of the closed pedestrian area, for example. So these small things, they make huge difference. Uh, we have respective guidelines on these three tools I've mentioned. This is the European Climate Pact, uh, Bauhaus and uh, Urban Green Platform. We have the description 
supported the experience of the EU, but they also include a lot of advices for the cities, what they can actually do and how can they join this initiative. So, the next slide, please. I will now follow up. This is the final slide. This will be the final one. When I communicate with the cities or mayors or with local governments, we also hear the question where should we seek for financing, for funding for the activities, because we can write that into our strategies, but where we could find the financing to implement it. But here should be another question. You will have funds if you start working on these issues just today because all the programs which are already working in the EU already includes a portion for financial, especially in the EU, for these green issues. I think that the EU delegation will bring more light into that because when some pro when respective programs will be uh, available for Ukraine this your city will be ready to utilize the funds which the EU and uh, external some external financial support from the EU will be ready to provide to you so at the same time you have to think about both about development and finance and funding Definitely, you have to understand how much money you need in order to reach the decarbonization or greening. But I think that cities have to think about these issues today because this is the issue of the future. Thank you very much for this inspiring speech. Thank you very much for this information. We are here not just to dream, not just to look who and what is doing, but we are going to talk about the practical dimension on how it's going to work, and our discussion will be aimed at practical issues, practical issues especially for the for our audience, because the European Green Deal could uh, be seen as something far away and unreachable. But it's not like that. You can ask questions on Facebook or in our Zoom chat. We will have time to answer your questions in during the next hour. And during this hour, you will hear the answers of our participants of our discussions. But I would like to start. And I'd like to uh, ask uh, Chloe Alio. Uh, and this uh, incredible and huge strategic uh, plan on the Euro which is called European Green Deal. Um, so um, we would like to really maybe explain to our audience, to the people who are uh, curious to know um, what, uh, how the EU can help to Ukraine, to what extent Ukraine can participate. As also Natalia uh, just recently said that not all the tools are available for uh, the Ukrainian you know, public or towns so far. Uh, but what is there? Um, what is the process? So please let us know. Um, thank you very much. Uh, I think it's a very uh, timely and a very useful event today. It's uh, important to talk about uh, how to have local green deal with uh, local communities uh, in Ukraine. Um, as you know, uh, the European Union is very active uh, since we announced the European Green Deal uh, two, two years ago. And Ukraine has expressed its interest in uh, working together on this path since it was announced. And uh, we have launched um, with the Prime Minister and the Vice President Timmermans of the European Commission in, um, in February, um, high-level Green Deal dialogue between uh, Ukraine and the EU. And we're discussing um, how to support Ukraine in its own transition path. So there's not only about approximation of EU legislation, but it's really about how to develop the green transition in Ukraine based on its uh, nationally determined contribution targets. So um, why it's also very important, I think it's because even though we can work together um, to mitigate the, the climate change at global level, the impacts are very localized. So uh, cities, local communities are a very uh, key role to play in um, responding to climate change challenges. 
And um, as uh, Natalia mentioned, we think in the EU that the local level is very important in tackling the green transition, and that it's very important to have a very frank dialogue on the opportunities, on the costs, and on the cost of non-action between uh, local communities, local authorities, uh, government, businesses, uh, and, and civil society. And this is, this is why the European Union has launched the Climate Pact that was mentioned by Natalia, which aims at inviting people, communities, organizations to share information and debate on climate change. She, she also mentioned other EU initiatives that are that are that are mainly targeting at EU cities, but I mean, this, they are platform that they are not excluding Ukrainian cities as well. So she mentioned the the Green Cities Accord, which is a charter between uh, Myers committing to making their cities cleaner. Um, there is also the Green Deal Going Local, which is um, um, aims at sharing best practices on how to support implementation of local green deals. There's a new European Bauhaus, which um, is an initiative that, that is around the new way of, of building, living, urbanism in cities, uh, including public procurement. And, and in Ukraine, I want to specifically mention the Covenant of Mayors, that uh, is an initiative um, that is also open to cities outside the Union. And we have close to 300 cities in Ukraine, I think, including Slovakia, that are members of this network. Um, and um, the cities commit themselves to reduce the greenhouse gas emission to at least 20% through uh, implementing sustainable energy and climate action plans. So including Ukrainian cities that are members of this network, they have, uh, they have committed and they are implementing these action plans. And we are supporting from the EU side uh, through a number of projects. We had um, 11 projects in the first phase and then six projects in the second phase, which is still ongoing, which are mainly focused on supporting uh, energy efficiency uh, renovation in municipal uh, buildings in the cities, or also street lighting. Um, and as you asked, I mean, I wanted to also give also example of how the EU is supporting the green uh, dealer locally. We are now developing through a project called Apenas 3 um, Regional Waste Management Plans and Regional Climate Adaptation Plans and Strategies in six regions in Ukraine. We are also promoting with local authorities, local SMEs, uh, the use of green public procurement, eco-labeling, uh, resource efficiency and circular economy, so how to adapt these EU practices at, at local level in Ukraine. We also have the Meyer of Economic Growth Initiative, which um, uh, is uh, very active in Ukraine, which is addressing development challenging, including transforming cities towards green recovery. And Slavocic has been a beneficiary of this program, and I was happy to take part in the final event with the Meyer in April, where I remember uh, praising the city for business development, but also for the potential for green economic recovery. And I think I remember you have um, embedded bike lanes uh, in the city. So this is one of uh, a very good example and also solar energy cooperative. Um, and uh, an important point that with uh, decentralization, the municipalities have inherited a number of assets, including um, depreciated infrastructure that required a lot of investment to make them greener. And we um, on the EU work a lot with international financing institutions to improve waste management, water supply, uh, wastewater treatment and public transport infrastructure to green to make the cities greener. And we also have a uh, ULIT program, which is one of um, a, a very successful cooperation program decentralization that also brings capacity uh, to HOMADAS uh, to support local and regional development. And uh, about municipal um, initiative, I want to mention now a program that is uh, the EU is supporting with the European Investment Bank. It's, uh, it's a mechanism for renovation of public buildings on energy efficiency. And a call is going to be launched. It's to um, enable municipalities to take a loan for um, energy efficiency investment. 
Um, in this area, we have a flagship initiative in Ukraine, which is called the Energy Efficiency Fund, where we invested close to 100 million uh, euro. Uh, and this is supporting homeowners association to renovate uh, multi-apartment buildings. So we are working together with the German government and the U Ukrainian government in, in this very successful program we have already received around um, uh, 850 applications. And this is really putting homeowners in the driving seats, but the municipalities um, also have a very important role to encourage the development of local um, of, uh, of, of, these, uh, of these projects. They can co-finance them. They can also support the business development around energy efficiency, energy auditors. So all these create local jobs also in, in the city. So I think it's very important. And the last point I wanted to mention that EU is also very much supporting is that the local uh, green deal comes from the local private sector and it's uh, their businesses have a very important role to play in developing green technologies, uh, clean tech solutions and we are very happy to have our um, program called FinTech which is providing climate innovation voucher that we implement with EBRD and with Green Incubator in uh, Ukraine, where we are providing grants and business development advice to innovative companies that provide um, forward-looking green um, solutions uh, in Ukraine. And we are very much looking forward to support many more green entrepreneurs that want to take the benefits of the green economy. There would be more questions for you later, uh, so we don't need to put everything uh, in there. Я також закличу аудиторію, якщо у вас є запитання щодо того, як брати... I would like to call the audience. If you have any questions, please do write them into the chat or whenever you want. This is the time. So now I would like to refer to Yuri as a major. There was a thought that we don't have to waste time. We and this is the case when Ukraine have to not be behind but be at least uh, on track with others. You are on the level of the cities. You are the president of the association of the energy efficient cities. What can you apply? What is the key? Uh, if we are talking about changes we are taking place uh, within the context of local communities. Pani Natalia said a lot of very correct and things because strategies, global decisions are taken on the highest level and then we have to implement that on our level in Hormadas, coming down to the lowest level. So all this takes place at the lowest level, at the level of the citizens. So we don't have to waste our time, we have to move together with the EU as it was with the uh, Mayor's Covenant. Uh, we have joined in 2019 this uh, agreement. It was the first pool of Ukrainian cities who joined that uh, agreement and we understood that uh, there were issues on energy efficiency and CO2 emissions. That was a win-win game. In any case you win because you have energy savings, you will have more comfortable building, you will have uh, more working places, it all made us act because our spendings were huge and even now they are much higher comparing to the EU and this is our chance to develop the local economies and the accent, the, the focus is right. Uh, the Green Deal is not about the environment only, it's about economy because economy creates a comfortable cities and this is our chance to change the economy and to change our lives. We have to start today and to uh, provide in our strategies these issues and then we will be able to offer our uh, citizens more comfortable and uh, more environmentally friendly life and we are working for that. Your city at that stage when you are a mayor, what do you plan, how do you see these opportunities for you and for your city? The Slavutich, we are a very interesting city, we are a satellite of the nuclear power station which is not working. We have a lot of cities around the world like that which uh, lost their uh, main centre and this is the time where we, when we can reinvent ourselves. Uh, 
and to uh, move forward to the green economy and we are moving forward this way and we are developing energy efficiency uh, directions they're very uh, beneficial for us because we have a huge infrastructure in our city and we have to spend a lot of money on that but when we will reach the circular economy it will decrease our spendings uh, to uh, serve the infrastructure of the city and that will help to improve the quality of life for our citizens and this is a chance for our businesses to develop in the directions which are not existing as of today so this is an opportunity to start working today taking into account the green deal this is a chance for such cities like our Rowers. this is uh, a chance to move forward in line with this green deal Energy efficiency in Green Deal, this is not the Green Deal only, this is the mindset in change and I would like to focus that the city, the Ramadas, they have to move the path of uh, changing the mindset and we have work for that. It's very good when you have respective tools, for example European tools, and you have resources to build your actions on but what's next the project is finished the resource is finished we have to think about the sustain sustainability and sustainability is only reached through the uh, ch change of mindset who started who are they who was the early adopter green incubator has been working for more than 10 years now that is an example how the private business might be involved, getting involved to this thing. My question might sound primitive. So here it is. What can you do personally and where do you need synergy with the local authorities, national authorities, maybe international community? Yeah, it's great. Start with yourself, uh, sort, uh, let's sort uh, rubbish. But if there is no infrastructure, you can sort trash, right? But you have actually have gone through this way of you've scaled up. What kind of opportunities can we use to move on that path? I think you've managed to hit my Achilles Achilles heel. You've raised very relevant questions. I'd like to say thank you to the other panelists. Uh, our organization can say thank you to the EU and the FinTech and European Development Bank. Green Incubator, Public Union, we're using the funds of EU. We have given out more than 1 million euros to Ukrainian enterprises and entrepreneurs who are creating climate-oriented solutions. To be specific, one of the most favorite enterprises that I love in Kyiv we've got a, an enterprise that creates uh, 3D printers uh, that are using Titan what is climate here? Simple saving Titan uh, provides carbon efficiency because manufacturing Titan is a very carbon heavy process you got Empire Company, for example, who are producing construction materials with these technical plants and some other elements. We've got various interesting Ukrainian companies that are using the EU funds to create these projects. We have funded, I think, 37 projects, and we have actually uh, spread this company to Belarus. We'd like to say thank you to the EU that they're not giving just talks, empty talk, that they're supporting us financially. We are supporting this creative aspect without which uh, nothing will happen. We are supporting entrepreneurs. We're focusing on entrepreneurs. Nothing will happen without them. Nothing will happen without people who are giving their passion into this project, into triggering the, the creation of this project. That is one aspect of my answer. I believe that's a great synergy, whereas we, as the representative of the civil society, of the public sector, when we're working with EU institutions and also with the Ukrainian business. Another project uh, is uh, how we work with Slavutich. In three buildings in Slavutich, we've created three electrical stations electrical plants, which are owned by a hundred uh, 
investors who are part of this cooperative, the Sunny City. We started this conversation with Yuri Kirilovich. We were talking how do we reinvent the city of Slavutic. And these conversations uh, were fruitful and created this product. We have been joking a lot. We had this invest nanny b long before the law has been adopted. Mr. Zislavotic has been a, a very uh, favorable city for us. And these cities are allowing this Green Deal to move forward. In many cities and towns we have uh, lots of opportunities for entrepreneurs to implement, realize themselves. Lots of green opportunities in particular. And as soon as the local authorities start helping them to do it, we'll have more and more opportunities like this. Of course, uh, lots of national authorities, uh, the national authorities are important. We have horrible waste disposal legislation. We can just dump uh, waste in the forest and we will not be fined. The electricity prices are really low, the taxes on CO2 emissions are low, and as soon as the polluters cannot allow the inspectors uh, enter their facilities because the fine is 750 hryvnias, we need to change these rules. We need to change the rules on the global, national, Ukrainian level, but in the community right now we have opportunities. You have to listen to them and talk to the entrepreneurs. In this very Slavutic city, we have at least the city of Slavutic. It's uh, 50, 250 kilometers from Chernihiv, and then you have to go via car. But there are lots of startups that are trying something, doing something, creating something, and they're creating war spaces. Uh, creating new values. I'd like to ask you about the legislative aspect, legislative framework. Let's imagine that we've got this conversation which is useful for our listeners. Uh, a mayor or small city or town or an activist who's working in this city council who wants to push this government, let's do this way. What could you do? What would you start with? What would be the first step? You as an activist, as a civil society representative, can you give us an example? What would be the first step? I'd like to ask this question for the people, for example. For example, people can open this website and read. So maybe uh, Mr. Yuri will start this conversation. In reality, for small cities, I will speak on the behalf of these local authorities of these small towns. We need to make the decision. What is our destination? What are benefits that we have right now? Is it agriculture? Uh -huh, I see. Let's check it out. Uh, check the Green Deal. What would be the future of agriculture? We're talking about competitiveness. Ukraine is not part of EU, but the Green Deal is about EU. But we're selling our products and we're aspiring to sell these products to the biggest markets. And EU is the biggest market in the world. If we have the conditions that these products cannot be sold in this market, you have to change your economy. That is example from the sector of agriculture. If we speak about the single profile uh, cities, single specialized cities, you have to, to find this competitive advantage to understand what can we do in the future. We have to start by finding your competitive advantage through the lens of this Green Deal. There is no other way. 2050, this year is going to come. It's going to come tomorrow. Today, we have 2030. We have taken up some responsibilities. The agreement of uh, mayors, we need to reduce emissions by 30, 40 percent. 2030 has, is today. It has to happen. 2050 is tomorrow. It's going to happen. And the economy is going to become green. If Ukraine is going to be in this green economy, if this our community is going to be competitive, we have to make the decision. What would be our priority to make the Green Deal a possibility, not a threat? Because we have lots of threats. Where do we find the money? Right. We take the money from the economy. Um, is still for you where you um, where I want to ask. So when people, you know, do not know from where to start. 
So where is the starting point for them? You know, for instance, Natalia gave an example. They have some, you know, booklets where people can read the first step. So for you, for instance, if somebody in Ukraine on the local level is interested, how do they learn? How do they know about the opportunities, for instance, that are given by the EU here? Yeah, I mean, there are some, uh, indeed, there. I mentioned this uh, initiative that provides some guidance to, for municipalities. We have a lot of networks. Um, we are providing some uh, technical assistance, as I mentioned, to municipalities, capacity building. We have this EU for Environment program that is explaining how to replicate EU best practices on, on eco-labeling, green public procurement, circular, circular economy practices. And I think there are some economic opportunities. You mentioned circular e economy as, as an area that you are exploring, Slavutic. I think it's indeed a very important at local level because we know that waste uh, is an issue, in particular at local level. We are waiting, really, we are supporting from the EU side for the waste uh, framework uh, law to be adopted. Um, this is something really, really important step that would be very important for Ukraine, but uh, circular economy would also be a way to get rid of part of this weight to, 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 to use uh, some uh, and recycle it. And this can really create local jobs. So I think this is one area important. Then energy efficiency, as I said, from the EU side, uh, we are uh, working together uh, with uh, partners at, at local level, with our international partners, we are really trying to support um, at re in the residential sector, but also in the municipal sector, working with municipalities through the different programs that I mentioned before, uh, uh, the public buildings, the Covenant of Myers, and so on. So I think this is this is also an area that is uh, very, very important. And um, I think it's also important to have cities such as Slavutis that really want to use the, the greening also as a way to support economic development. So when we when we look at the Green Deal at European level, we really see this as a growth strategy that is encompassing all sectors of the economy, uh, from energy to transport, to agriculture, to the w what we eat, how we produce, how we move. So this is very relevant at local level. So I think basing the economic development of cities on the green uh, area is, is very important. And businesses also have a key role to play in that area. So we are trying in the EU to support the businesses that want to take this green path, to, to take the opportunity of being inserted in green value chains toward the EU, but also at global level, because this is also a very important player uh, in the economy and they can also create jobs in this area. They can drive the development locally. Andriu. Andre, what kind of advice would you give us? Because you have this big bunch of work, you cannot know how do you start. What do you start on? I think we can speak about a, a very unlikely audience. The audience that does not come to your mind when you speak about the communities. And this audience is... Uh, developers of uh, building projects. What am I speaking about here? We have a simple thing here. For example, we're driving uh, on the riverbank and they're building quality buildings. But I don't, wouldn't want to live there. Why? Because the level of uh, air pollution is so high, your, your uh, window will be closed always. And the, this notion of this uh, price of land, the developers, the builders, they understand this, the value of uh, property. And uh, Yuri Karilovich, as a person who has a great experience in building sphere, will support me. We need to start this competitiveness, fighting for the citizens between cities. And green transformations might arise from this. Because right now, developers might be the drivers of this greenification of the cities. If there are some activists in the cities who want to change in their towns and their villages, we need to, they need to stimulate their citizens to elect the proper officials. For example, in Slavotic and uh, the city of Rivne, in Rivne, the secret was simple. The city council has been reloaded. 
the party included lots of eco activists i know them personally and they're doing lots of things there we need to speak about we need to talk about the local authorities we need to talk with the self-governance bodies and these bodies need to need to meet these people halfway they need to think how will our city live in 10 20 years it's about strategy building what would be the vision for our city in 20 years for example we've got medical facility 25% uh, of citizens are working there for example if this medical facility will not survive the com competition from Turkish companies if it's gonna die how we're gonna survive right it's about involving this uh, activists into the strategy building of the cities how are gonna we earn money how we, are we gonna earn money in the cities in 20, 10, 20, 10 20 years i'd like to ask andre uh, where do you get the funds where do you get the funds we uh, hear this question all the time this economy actually can provide new profits new opportunities but we need to have this primary investment in EU, for example, there's some support for business. In Ukraine, we can say, whatever they say, the Ukrainian government is not so wealthy. There's big business who's been using these resources of the government. It might not look fair if, if the government is supporting big business. I'm not speaking about the SMEs who really need this support. Where do we see this opportunity? How do we differentiate supporting the biggest companies that is not ukrainian solution how do we uh, differentiate between big and small companies and between support provided it's a very complicated question because uh, we have uh, big institutions who supported uh, were supported by the government the question is do we need to support them more from now and onwards when we speak about the big companies direct support from the government does not make any sense it would be logical they should go to the financial market where they can engage using good percentages they can just uh, engage funding on the open market if we speak about equal projects uh, of small companies which are more vulnerable or startups that, that they're nobody they're not a big player on this financial market they cannot I cannot they cannot put anything on the table and say uh-huh that would be my collateral for a project or for a loan right it makes sense to support them I think the Ukrainian government has started doing we complain about the Ukrainian government a lot We've got this Ukrainian Foundation for Startups. We have lots of uh, green-related uh, startups who receive this funding, but we need to be careful. But why? Because uh, regardless of it, the economy is being driven by the SMEs from the industrial sector. We need to differentiate. We need to reinforce the capabilities of the state to uh, differentiate between rent lookers and uh, those companies who are creating added value in the climate sphere. We're speaking about the government. So why are we focusing only on the government? Ukraine has lots of money. There are lots of people who are willing to invest in green solution. Look, we've got this wonderful company Delfast company they had created this electric based bicycles for being sold in California in America during their crowdfunding campaign in a couple of months they have uh, g raised more than 3.6 million dollars and they said a very interesting thing uh, during their interview we thought that we'll have foreign investors but the 90 percent of their investors are Ukrainians so lots of IT guys who knew them who invested into them we cannot say that we have a country with no investment no if you have a good product lots of Ukrainians are seeking an opportunity to invest into something right there are lots of opportunities 
it also depends on the region but uh miss yuri i'm gonna give the floor to you i'm gonna be accepting questions you are the representative of the local authorities you might support some business or do you want the business support the city in this way so what is your vision of course we want the business of course we want the business to support us but there is a big but in order to support the city the business should be big should develop and pay taxes that will be the main support for the local level this is the these are tax taxes paid and working places of course we are not talking about big corporations we are talking about uh, startups there is a startup fund ukrainian startup fund and i'm very grateful to the eu for the programs which are aimed at support of ukrainian enterprises green vouchers and other other tools but the main aspect uh, is uh, aspect of priorities because you're always looking for opportunities to improve infrastructure to make something better just to give funds to the business for the for the start it's not easy it's always complicated and usually these investments are not huge definitely we see such stories but that's mainly about policies not about uh, real funds, but as to the local level, as to preferences for incentives, there could be some local incentives. For, for example, for rent, uh, taking into account existing legislation, it's not easy as of today. But we managed to do that. This is kind of a business zone where the rent payment uh, is three hundred seventy-eight kopecks for one square meter. It's, this is a very affordable price, and we signed the agreement for providing services in the park during 72 hours this is a very good incentive for local business for startups to make their life at the very beginning of their path uh, easier to help them to get to california to sell their products so this local level it can create preferences, it can create incentives, especially in the framework of um, green economy. Because direct financing at the local level is the best tool which can be invented in this regard. But the vision, the policies and the uh, this uh, providing these resources we are ready to do that or for example electricity sanitation roads uh, this is more about industrial parks or about different institutions but they all should work together so the task for the local government is to create conditions and to provide preferences and incentives for businesses which are in my opinion uh, are in line with the green deal requirements and they are the future so we have to remember that thank you so we are moving to the questions from our audience we have many of them i will read the question from andri hanap to alio to mrs alio what is the role of the eu delegation in the uh, public information in open data in the process of moving towards the circular economy so open data in the framework of uh, uh, circular economy transformation and one more question how to join the program on uh, heat insulation for the cities so there is a program so what are the opportunities here questions but so the i mean i say as i said on circular economy uh we are trying to share eu best practices uh through program that we have that do trainings for uh local uh private sector for civil society organization local authorities and we are also trying to uh push this agenda with the government we are now going to launch a study with uh, with the ministry 
uh, of environment and economy to look at the value chains that have potential for circular e economy in Ukraine uh, and how can we try to help the government then to develop some action plans, to develop these sectors, to support the businesses in this area. And I'm not sure on the second question on energy efficiency, if it relates to uh, the program that I mentioned, the 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 one that is financed by the European Investment Bank, what I said that there will be soon a, a call for proposal. I think they want to launch it by the end of the year, so it should be run really now uh, a call for uh, proposals to municipalities to be able to join this program um, to get a loan for energy efficiency renovation uh, for municipal public buildings. Андрію, до вас. Я кажу, вони дуже різноманітні, але в цьому є і наша особливість цього заходу. Які вимоги у бізнесу до місцевого This is a peculiarity of our event. What are requirements to the businesses in order to invest funds into them in terms of green economy issues? So this is quite a complicated issue actually because every business has as artists have writers, business has its own requirements depending on their value chain and monetization possibilities. So what the business wants from the local governments, it could be absolutely different depending on the business and on the local government. Businesses could be totally different. Somebody wants to have some legitimate uh, requirements, uh, somebody wants some off-record requirements. So my thought here is that as a main factor, there should be a correct dialogue between the business and the local government. But the way how they're going to cooperate, this is another issue. With Sonich Namisto we have a very good situation. On one side we took three uh, roofs which were empty earlier before but we pay 5% of our net income. This is a given gap to community to so such arrangements could allow to find some new ways of interaction between local communities, local governments and uh, businesses. I think there are a lot of ways to construct them. We have a lot of e questions regarding Slavujic. That was the question from Oksana Kisil and Riso Horyabov mentioned that Slavujic is a leader city. It has a number of green businesses so the question to uh, the mayor, what do you do? So the green business is established in the Slavutic city. What should we change in new climate plan in order to take into account the requirements of the Green Deal? And what uh, are the issues related to the adaptation to climate change? And one more question, they, I think, are all quite alike. Igor Hancharenko has a number of comments and says that, and asks actually, how can we encourage mayors to develop these plans and how to motivate local uh, managers to um, attract uh, scientists in this regard as to the business? I will add just a little bit. I truly believe that the key role of the government and the local government, namely, is uh, not to interfere, not to make their life worse in all possible ways. We know that Slavutic has a number of green businesses and in order to support them it's necessary to make them a part of economy. The example with 7 gram is a very good example. These are pads from uh, coffee, uh, from wasted coffee. So how can you take uh, waste coffee and how can you create pads from it? They have created this to 
technology and now this technology is already transformed into the project but uh, there is an issue of logistics on collecting the uh, coffee waste so there is another business who has which has developed another e direction of its activity so they collect this waste and then this and and actually this waste coffee is uh, put into a separate container and then it is collected by this logistics part partner and afterwards they produce respective products. So this is a dialogue and all these processes they have come from the dialogue. That's how it works actually. So the uh, so the um, cooperation should be transparent. If they said that we they will pay 5% of net income to the budget of the city, that should be transparent, uh, transparent in all ways. So we have to show how do we spend this money because we took uh, this money from gr some green technology and we have to invest it some into somehow related fields. Another issue, the adaptation. This is a top number one. We understand that climate changes. We, a few years be ago, we believed that it could be in some 2050 or later, but we understand that it, we have these changes now and adaptation should become our priority as of today. We have to include this issue into all our strategy. Oksana, you, uh, I absolutely support your thought and we have to think about adaptation, adaptation of our economy, our infrastructure, how it will work. Example, a very good example of today's weather in Kiev. I think that uh, it's uh, like uh, uh, in this region, minus one in at night and around zero at day. So we have to adapt to that be because uh, if we purchase municipal transport vehicles, we have to understand that in summers we have uh, high temperatures and it's not possible to operate these vehicles without conditioning, air conditioning. So the adaptation is a vital part of our work in cities. It, it should be taken into account in all plans on sustainable en energy development and it should become a, a very important part of all our plans. Are there any questions? Uh, I think I will continue w to... I will try to read it clearly it's so the EU Green Deal it's not only about uh, CO2 emissions reduced but it's also about adaptation to climate change as of now the EU supports mitigation of respective changes or the level of credit programs of big investors do you have plans to develop any financial mechanisms or arrangements in order to support measures directed uh, at nature? Uh, we are supporting the development of regional adaptation strategies in, in, in some regions with our, with our projects. And we are really um, working with uh, the government in supporting the uh, approximation of relevant EU legislation uh, in the relevant annexes of the association agreement, which are Annex uh, 30 and 31 on environment um, uh, discussions. And now we are talking about uh, um, the the how to look at the dynamics of EU and EU and environmental and climate legislation and how to um, transpose uh, what could be transposed in Ukraine and so on. So I think um, the EU acquis is is a good um, starting point for Ukraine and um, the transposition should be accelerated and for environment and climate this is this is a reference but of course we understand that in ukraine ukraine needs to have its own 
uh, transition paths, and this is why you think we think it's it's very important uh, to support the authorities at all levels. We work a lot with the government, but I said also that we look at, at local level. We're really really having some projects that are targeting environment and climate with local authorities. So trying to help them through investment, but also through developing some these adaptation plans, some strategies uh, to make their cities greener. So we think this is uh, this is something very important, and we are very much committed to continue supporting both the government, the local authorities, the local businesses, and I didn't mention local also um, civil society actors. We also have a specific calls where now we had some beneficiaries for environmental project from civil society working together with local communities to implement some very uh, concrete project at local level. So this is very much an integrated approach and we are committed to continue to support it. У нас є коментар, який питання, коментар і друге питання е, схоже. На перше, я думаю, що це не зовсім до вас, але важливо. We've got a commentary. Thank you for watching us. It's agency of Madabore. It's the Ternopil Amagamate community. They say that the preserved area without commercial activity uh, becomes the center of uh, pollution. So can we change this preserved area status to the national park status? It's a general question, but the community wanted to have this question heard. Uh, what are the instruments and could be part of the Green Deal? What are the instruments open for the Ukrainian cities in terms of cleansing water areas, accessibility uh, of water, in public and private places within the city area. Mr. Andre? In fact, you've got enough opportunities and we're not only talking about the opportunities produced by EU as a whole. We have a number of countries, namely Denmark, who offer the lines of funding for Ukrainian cities to improve their utility infrastructure, in particular to cleanse water. It, it's related to the utility companies' jurisdiction. The problem is that many Ukrainian cities and communities cannot utilize these instruments. Why? Some don't want to, for some it's uh, stuck on the regional level. Let's say funding opportunities for s these specific areas. If a city wants, aspires to, and seeking these opportunities, there are these opportunities. You, they can find them. But these are the... We're speaking about the, we speak about the funding of a couple of millions of euros and you want to launch it you have to be patient you have to travel to the cabinet of ministers i think yuri karilovich is traveling to the cabinet of ministers every two days solving some issues you have to go to the central government it's a normal operation you need to talk to the financial institutions it's difficult to talk to them you need to talk to the representatives of bank it's a complicated process but you have to do it i've been part of many projects but those actors who want something they receive both attention and interest let's speak about the economy lots of european countries stimulate their exporters by providing some preferential funding it will be beneficial for us. Yes, we use their equipment, but we receive cheap funding. There are so many options, like the ones I've mentioned. Those who seek will always find these opportunities. Uh, I'll continue about water. I think a year ago I've been developing a project with the local mass media. It was related to environment too. It was shocking to see in diff lots of journalists are sending materials from city they don't have drinking water and the reason was different right S sometimes well was not uh, operational or they have some uh, polluting facilities but when you d delve into this topic it's a big problem for ukraine 
And the question is whether the Green Deal can be part of this solution. It's a very important thing. What would be your questions? I think in Chernihiv region, in the northern part of the country, we have lots of water areas. In Slavutic, we have no issues with water. We got wonderful. And uh, the mayor drinks tap water. We get artesian water. We have a different component. This water, after recycling, it goes somewhere. It's uh, sent to the recycling facilities, and then to the Dnieper River. The Green Deal can not only can be instrumental, but it should be and will be this instrument of resolving these water-related issues. I think we've re uh, the, we're grateful to the government who have given out more than one billion hryvnias for these water-related issues. On the local level, it's very difficult to resolve these issues. Mr. Andri said, yes, we have some engagement of uh, funds of donors of European institutions, but for new communities, you cannot do it because the scale is too big. Of course, there is this component of co-funding. You cannot just uh, implement a project. You have to have co-funding. It's just, it's justified. If you want to implement a project, show that you're willing to spend your m own money to implement a project. Only then will you be able to implement this question. Yes, it's difficult. You need to have a team that's working and managing projects. I'm grateful to my team. Uh, I'm grateful to our project management teams. We were not able to attract many projects, but this attention to tap water, drinking water, uh, we should focus on it. And I'm grateful for this one billion. I'd like to ask Miss Chloe. There are some practical issues, but that is the beginning. Change of the legislation is the beginning of it all. Ukrainian has announced we're trying to approximate and synchronize its legislation with the EU's legislations and compliant with the Green uh, Deal. So the question, what kind of areas should we focus on in the first place? What would be the biggest obstacles that are preventing Ukraine to implement projects? Yeah, there are a lot of commitments from the side of Ukraine, but is it anything specific where you see the Ukraine could move faster or where the overall the things where the legislation should be synchronized so Ukraine would benefit from the Green Deal? Uh, I think one area that is very important, I mentioned that it's uh, the environmental area. Um, this is a very important part of the decarbonization of the, of the economy. And uh, as I said, we are supporting uh, the government and the parliament in um, uh, passing a, a number of legislation that are very important. So I mentioned the waste, uh, the waste law, uh, the waste framework law. Uh, there, you mentioned nature protection. There is a biodiversity law that is also uh, now blocked in, in parliament. I mean, this went to different readings, but then they, 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 these laws don't go to adoption. Uh, there's there's a law on environmental control, which was also very important because if you want to implement uh, the polluter pay principle, and you need to have the the possibility to answer enforcement of legislation, you need to have an uh, inspector that can go into 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 factory that can that can look at the environmental situation there. So environmental control is also very important. Um, there's uh, there's a law that was adopted uh, a year ago. Um, monitoring, reporting and verification uh, that makes it compulsory for company to declare their CO2 emissions. Um, but this law also needs to be fully enforced because there needs to be secondary legislation to uh, ensure control and verification. So it's not sufficient to have declaration, but you also need to have control and verification systems. Um, and um, yeah, I just... I didn't want to, yeah, and there's a law on in industrial pollution. That is also a very important law that is also um, not going through in the parliament. We are working with the, with, the, with the members of parliament, we're working with the government, but this one is also a very important one to be passed. We have a couple of questions to ask questions via Facebook, via Zoom, but I'd like to wrap up a little bit. So what are these laws, right? What can you say about this? 
I'm really sorry, but I'm gonna speak in some platitudes. There are lots of laws. We have lots of laws in this area, but we need to understand that uh, the major direction of change, both in energy sector, in environment, which is related to energy sector, all these things are relate these all these directions of changes are related to the responsibility and honesty what am i speaking about what do i mean by this when at home we're not paying full price for recycling waste it means that the local infrastructure is not developing it means there are no entrepreneurs who are who are earning on waste recycling and paying taxes it means there is no funds for supporting engineers who would invent new innovative ways of recycling these uh, wastes. When we're not basing proper funds for energy because we have some subsidies or for heating, it leads to the fact that we're sitting on this uh, gas needle of Putin. We need to understand that uh, because for the environment, for the energy, for the energy resources, oh, there are lots of access to energy is the human right. I do not believe so. It's nonsense. We need to understand it's a privilege, and you have to pay for such a privilege. You have to pay proper price, but in the process, but in the process of creation these privileges we're developing our own economy yeah we need to analyze and take into account the vulnerable groups of populations but we need to take into account that every single citizen should be responsible for waste that we're producing what i'm really happy i'm observing in kiev lots of citizens of kiev are picking up shit of, from their dogs Many people are not doing it, but many people are doing it. Like Chloe has said, you need to have enforcement. People who are not cleaning up shit after their dogs, after their pets, they should be responsible financially. It's all about accountability. In particular about the how a person treats the environment and how the person uses energy. It's a very important discussion about rights and privileges we have different audiences you said you've spoken about the vulnerable groups there are some unconventional vulnerable groups for example officials who are receiving minimal wages they we cannot work in business right I got a question to you I'll speak about the legislation but I'd like to mention uh, maybe somebody will be scared what do you do with people who cannot afford to do something what do the people for whom this is a privilege the citizen is working efficiently we've got subsidies you have specific subsidies for specific groups of populations but the system need to be developed and reinvented and approved we we'll analyze verify and re-implement right it's a traditional approach but this uh, process of creating subsidies for vulnerable groups we have this process but I do agree with Andre we need to be honest with ourselves right I support Miss Chloe we need to be weighed the law on waste it's a very difficult complicated law the parliament's really tough on it there are lots of MPs who are resisting it I'd like to focus on this law on waste which would justify our, our actions that would justify our responsibilities, our bylaws, and the punishments for violation of the law. We have lots of wonderful laws, but they should be enforced. The inspector should be able to inspect the facilities. I inspector should be independent, unbiased, not receive some bribes for closing his eyes. He should be independent. He should be receive such a salary uh, so that he sh will not have this need to take bribes. He should be unbiased. It's all about economy. It's about big money. 
and I'm still looking forward to new changes, taking into account the Green Deal. It's time to speak about weight. It's too late to speak about weight. We have to act now. Thank you. This conversation on one side, it was about everything from water to money, funds, to insulation of cities. But that is the question of the Green Deal, because it's comprehensive. It's applicable to everything. Just like Miss Natalia has mentioned in the beginning, it's about the this uh, green grass on this uh, tram track. We have some synthetic artificial solutions, or how do we build new residential areas? But this conversation, this discussion, it's not within any conference, but it's a little bit international. You've been watching this conference uh, from different cities. It's, a, it's organized by the uh, Adenauer Stiftung Foundation. It's part of the EU campaign on opening green potential together. We've spoken about the Green Deal for the local communities, about the perspectives and opportunities. We do hope that we might, uh, that we have been useful, maybe inspirational. I think you've seen some role models and you've seen that you have these opportunities. They'll not be given to you for free. You have to think how to use them, how to analyze them. But that is our job. Thank you for your attention. My name is Natalia Gomanyuk. Thank you for to the interpreters who have been working for all of us. And we're grateful to the team who made this broadcast possible. Wishing you all the best. Read and know more. Thank you for participation.